I made the mistake of asking you why Harry didn't get other invitations to other <laughs> schools and you were boring me to tears with your answer. So well, that was such an interesting I, question. <laughs> to me, to me, it was not. To me, it, I was just a little curious about it. And you were getting so specific about like areas and regions and like being drafted <laughs> and stuff that my soul was dying and I, I couldn't I had to stop it. So I'm really going to be very particular. You're such about. a drama queen. I'm going to limit the number of questions. And I'm also going to clarify when I have rhetorical questions that don't need an answer. <laughs> Wait, what did you ask a rhetorical question that doesn't need an answer? I'm just going to, I just, I'm just going to clarify from now on. So you don't go down some nerd hole rabbit trail. <laughs> on, um, I have some um, Enneagram topics to bring up this time. I have some guesses brewing for some Enneagram numbers. Excellent. Let's but but wait, I can't get into that now. Yeah. But we need to get into that as we get into the story. <laughs> but I have a few guesses. I have one big guess. And then um <laughs> You really built that up there. You can't like even say who Like one strong guess. Okay. Well, Hagrid. I'm pretty sure I know what Hagrid is. It came to me and it makes perfect sense. Okay. And then I maybe have some weaker guesses for some other characters. Some side ones. I also have some um I also well like main characters, but I don't have as strong of a, a guess. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Okay. And then I also have some um I also have some theories emerging in my mind that I will discuss. <laughs> You're just uh keeping me on the cliff's edge right here. This well is... I can't get into it. We need to get into like each chapter. All right, well let, let's just skip all this stuff. Let's just get right into it. Welcome to the podcast. I'm John. I'm Abby. <laughs> and this is Harry Potter and the first time readers. Hello, everyone. Here are your typical reminders. Go give us a rating and review. Go subscribe to us on Patreon and on, and on YouTube. Everything is at First Time Readers on Instagram, on Twitter. Our email is firsttimereaders at gmail.com. Our website is firsttimereaders.com. We also have a shop part of our website where you can get some merch, which is shop.firsttimereaders.com. Um, we have some house merchandise and some podcast merchandise so we got all sorts of fun stuff really if you guys wanted to support this podcast that'd be like the coolest thing there's a few people who do and it's um pretty fantastic and pretty cool and we're all we uh, are pretty humbled and very appreciative of anybody who is supporting the podcast you guys are the best we love you guys so much and um yeah that's pretty much all i got for this one we'll keep this one short but enjoy these chapters of Abby and me ranting about Sorcerer's Stone, which is great. We love this book. I love this so much. So enjoy. That's going to be one of the shortest intros we ever do, because I just want to hear your theories well, and all this kind of stuff. There's no need. Yeah, there's no need to belabor the point. Let's just get right to it. <laughs> OK, chapters, uh, chapters eight, eight, nine, and, nine 10. and ten. Yeah. So can you give me a quick summary of chapter eight, which is the potions master? Yes. Yes. And here is where I have, well, I'll just give an <laughs> overview first. And then I, this is where I have some thoughts. Yeah. Just give. give me, just give me Ch a quick overview. Sure. Uh, chapter eight is when they begin school for the first time. So they start going to classes. Uh, it describes like the hallways in Hogwarts, the staircases. It's such a confusing little building getting around and everything like that. Um, they, they start their classes. Flitwick, mm -hmm. is that his name? The little guy? Yeah. He, Flitwick is, I forget what he teaches, but he's very excitable. And yeah. one of my favorite moments was in this chapter where he sees Harry Potter and he squeals and falls off of his like platform or something <laughs> that he's standing on. Do you remember that part? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he squeals and falls over. <laughs> Does he squeal because he's excited to see Harry? It says that. It says he squeals. I have my, I don't have my book with me. It says that because okay. I thought it was funny and silly. Um, Flitwick, I forget the exact order, and but then they go into Snape's class and Snape. Am I getting out of order here? The right chapter? No, yeah, this uh, is it. This is Potions Master. Yeah, he he doesn't 
think that Snape likes him and then he comes to find realize that he Snape hates him. Mm-hmm. Um so Snape is very rude to him. Um they're making like the potion in that class mm-hmm. and he keeps like drilling Harry and he doesn't know any of the answers to these questions. And then they go to make a potion and the guy beside Harry is that Neville. If someone makes a mistake, yeah. but then Snape like blames Harry and it's not Harry's fault. So basically he's the but but Snape likes Draco Malfoy. Yeah, which is the worst. A little evil which partnership is the worst, there. But I they're two dark sided people. So I have some theories brewing about those two. Um so yeah, he doesn't like or Snape doesn't like him. Um And then they're eating in the dining hall and an owl comes and it's an invitation from Hagrid Mm. to go to his house for tea. So Harry and Ron go to Hagrid's house for tea. And while they're at Hagrid's house, um, he, Harry brings up Snape not liking him Mm -hmm. and Hagrid kind of avoids the question. Yeah. I'm watching your face. You can watch my face all you want. I'm not going to give away any information. Because I'm getting into theories. <laughs> and then um, and then he notices on the table a cutout of a news article explaining that the bank was robbed the day that they went to it and Hagrid emptied out that top secret vault. So the, it's not just the newspaper sitting on the table. It's a cutout of that specific story. Hmm. Good pickup. So, Good pickup. I'm I'm pretty sure that concludes. Let me look at my notes. I'm pretty sure that concludes my overview of chapter eight. It warms my heart that you're taking notes for all this kind of stuff. That <laughs> you're you're well, you're looking at the <laughs> clippings that Hagrid has taken out of newspapers. <laughs> well, it's written about, so I think it's an interesting detail placed in there. Well, this also reminded me because last time. When we went over chapters five, six, and seven, I was sure that you were going to ask me my guesses on what was in that top secret vault, and you didn't. Hmm. But now it comes up again, so now we're going to talk about it because it's more of a a plot point. Yeah, this is like more of a plot point, so that's why we're going to talk about it here. Well, I picked up on it last time, but I forgot (laughs) to bring it up. (laughs) I need to be getting more careful around you. You're like picking up on all the side things that I'm not saying and that I am saying. You're analyzing me a little bit too much. This is a little strange. I am. I, am. I actually have a theory for when I'm on to something, but I'm not going to tell you what it is in case you change it. You have a certain reaction when I think I'm right about something, but I'm not going to say what it is. <laughs> I am so curious. You guys just got to tell me so I can change it or not. No. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I do have some like theory ideas here, but then I also have some Enneagram theories here. Yeah, yeah. Not theories, but just like thoughts. Okay. Here's what Hagrid is. And I feel like it's so obvious. He's an Enneagram two. What is an Enneagram two is what? An Enneagram two is the helper. Yeah. Um, they're very, so I think that that's Hagrid. Enneagram twos, from my understanding, have... I mean, they're helpers, like just Mm -hmm. what it's talked about. So like they know how to like read people, read a room. Um, They want their gear towards like helping, taking care of people. But Enneagram 2s also have this warmth about them. Yeah. And Hagrid always is described as having this warmth. And Hagrid like cares for Harry. And it almost to me feels like a stereotypical like mother figure just to like come and like take mm. care of you. And so I feel certain that Hagrid is an Enneagram too. Uh, yeah, I'm looking it up right now and that's, he is an Enneagram too. As an Enneagram too, Hagrid is warm, giving and helpful, which are the three things that you said. He greatly yeah. values friends and family caring deeply for their well-being. Kind and considerate Enneagram twos are never short of people who have their back. Hagrid is empathetic and genuine, always wanting to help others in one way or another. I feel like that's his character to a T, don't you? Yeah, 100% agree. Yeah, he's especially the warmth. And he's probably, would you say that he's like the first parental figure that Harry has had in his life? I think so, yeah. He's, yeah. He came in that 
cabin when he, we first see him and like yeah. he's all for Harry. Yeah. Yeah. That's um Yeah, I think he is you really don't get any other people that are looking out for Harry in the way that Hagrid is looking out for Harry in this moment. Like even the very very beginning of the book when this when he is the one transporting Harry, he's like sad and bummed that he's that all this stuff has happened to Harry. Like even then he's he's sympathizing and empathizing with Harry for like his parents mm. dying, for all that kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden he gets reintroduced into the story and like nothing has changed about him. But he takes Harry like under his wing. He helps him out with everything. Yeah. He ushers him into the wizarding world. And now he's yeah. become one of the best friends that Harry's had. It, it was shocking to me if I am I, like I love friendship, but that's like something where I love that Harry loves Hagrid so much at this point in the book. Like when he got the letter, he's like, hey, come down to my cabin and we can, you know, like talk about the yeah. the, the week so far. If I'm yeah. if I'm a Harry at that moment, I'm like, you're a sixth grader or your first year, you're going, I like rather, you know, hang out with my friends right now or something like that. But Harry values Hagrid so much as a friend and as like a parental figure that he that's like he that's the only thing he wants to do. And I really love that about yeah. Harry. He really values well, Hagrid's Harry friendship. And he has no one else like checking in on him yeah, where typically exactly. like a mom yeah. or dad or brother or sister, aunt, uncle, whoever would reach out and be like, how's your first week of school? I love that Hagrid is that person to yeah. do that because no one else, his aunt and uncle wouldn't do that, you know? Yeah, exactly. I know. And yeah. do you think his aunt and uncle are ever going to check, um, check in on him in these books? Uh, I would say probably not if rarely. Yeah, I know. They're little stingy suckers. Yeah. I don't see that happening. Yeah, I know. Um, I'm looking at my notes here. I actually don't have a ton of questions for chapter eight. Although I do have questions for chapter eight. Ones that you don't want to answer. Personal well, questions. What <laughs> no, I'm is... Just kidding. Yes. <laughs> skip all those <laughs> what is in the secret vault and why have we not talked about it i have a very strong guess i feel like there's a 50 percent. i feel like there's a hundred percent chance i know what it is and there's a 50 percent chance of <laughs> i have two different guesses Wait, <laughs> is that what i'm trying to say you have a hundred percent chance you know what it is but a 50 percent chance a, <laughs> where you don't know what I it is i have two guesses and i'm sure that one of them is correct <laughs> so of my two guesses, I feel like there's a hundred percent chance I'm gonna get it. There's a hundred percent chance you're right on your fifty percent chance guess. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's like the line from uh what's the movie? Like 80% of the time it works a hundred percent of the time. Yeah. Anchorman. Anchorman, yeah. <laughs> Well, why haven't you guessed why haven't you asked me well, what is in the secret vault? Because you just asked it. I'm waiting for you to answer that. Well, but why didn't it come up in the last chapters? Because it was going to be a more pertinent question right now. Uh, okay. Because okay. there's, so there's small side things. Like you're noticing small side things right now. So this is giving me permission to ask you about small side things. Like you noticed something as small as a clipping, a newspaper clipping rather than the full newspaper article. Um, mm -hmm. Like if you're noticing small things like that, it was, it was not a, uh, like, I, I don't think it was a, very, very small thing that Hagrid took that thing out of the vault and they like snatched it up. But it was small enough that I was actually kind of hoping you would bypass it and not really notice so that we can talk <laughs> about it here, which you still noticed, but you didn't talk about it. So like, I'm hoping that because if even like as a first time reader, it piques your interest for a second and then you get right back into the story. So sometimes you're, you're supposed to forget about that fact. And then mm. when it comes up later, it's like, oh, I remember that back then. This seems like the more pertinent time to discuss it rather than like oh, back then. Oh, I haven't forgotten about it. I simply forgot to bring it up in our conversation. It's and always been top of mind to me. <laughs> okay, good. I'm also trying to read, uh, <laughs> misdirect you by not bringing up important points so that... I figured that out. Yeah, yeah. So what's in the I vault? I figured that out. Uh, well, I have two guesses. Okay. Um, the one that seems most obvious is from the title of the book. I think... I think it might be the Sorcerer's Stone, even <laughs> though I don't know what that is yet. Is that your your strong guess? That's my strongest guess. My other less strong guess 
is it's like a wand of some sort. It's either like Voldemort's wand or interesting someone's wand. So here's what I know about what was in that vault from chap from the other chapter where it's first brought up. One that vault is like super high clearance, um, and even the people at the goblin at Gringotts says like if anyone. Tr- no one could open the door or whatever. Like basically no one is allowed in there. If they tried to open the door, they would like melt or die or disappear. Mm-hmm. I don't remember. Um, and, um, but Hagrid has been like given permission to get it. And then there's something that is said about, they check it every 10 years. Yeah. So it's something that has existed for a long time, like over 10 years, you would think. Okay. Um, so Harry is 10 or 11 years old. So I don't know if it's connected to like Harry's birthday. I don't know about that. But so it's something that has existed for a long time. Um, and then the only reason I think it might be a wand of some sort is because they're, they said it's wrapped in uh, like a paper yeah, some bag dingy, or something. Yeah. And when he's buying a wand in the other chapter, it just said that his wand was wrapped in brown paper brown paper bag you're picking up on a lot of good stuff wow you are a detective (laughs) in this book holy smokes watch out um so that's why i think it's it's one of those two things and i feel certain it's one of those two things i think it's more likely to be the sorcerer's stone even though i don't know what that is yet the reason i don't think it's a wand though is because in chapter eight or nine or ten or one of those chapters it talks about how the item is less than two inches so I don't think it's a wand. It could be a really like a short broken, wand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it could be a broken tip of a wand or a, a short wand. But I feel certain I'm on the trail of something. <laughs> um, I what, rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the Sorcerer Stone actually is? I don't, I really don't know. Also, I think um, I looked again at the cover of the book and it's Harry Potter riding his broomstick and he's like catching something in the air and it's like a, a he, like a ball. Is he catching the so sorcerer's the, stone? I assume so. <laughs> so the sorcerer's stone. You is figured like out the a, whole book. We don't have to read this book anymore. Well, no, there's still some, un, there's still some question marks here. I don't know no. what the sorcerer's stone is. I still don't really know what the crux of the story is. I don't know what the, I don't know what the tension is. You don't know what the Sorcerer Stone does. Let's say that, um, like, maybe it's a wand. We don't really know. It could be a broken wand because they could have broken Voldemort's wand. Um, Mm -hmm. Let's talk about wand lore for a a hot second. Do you think that there Mm -hmm. are some wizard's wands that are more powerful than other wizard's wands? Probably, yes. So do you think Voldemort has a wand that's better than everyone else's wand is that why he's able to do magic so well or is it because he's just an experienced better magician than everyone else Mm, well maybe both maybe he's charged up his wand over the years (laughs) and he's used it so much and he knows all these advanced spells that his yeah his wand has just seen it all he has an advanced wand okay because he's used it more So like the longer the miles on the wand, the better it is. Yeah. So what happens if someone... So we're talking about Voldemort right now. He's gone. Do you think that if... Do you think that someone else could be using his wand? I know it's maybe a weird question, but could someone else be using his wand? And does that that mean like the power is maximizing because someone else is using his wand? Or does that mean it's like starting from scratch again? (laughs) <laughs> you don't um, have to look at me like that <laughs> i didn't maximizing i well i don't fully understand your question but yeah i think i think the wand would still be powerful even if someone else like stole it and was using it okay interesting you're really interesting mm-hmm. and you have mm-hmm. no idea what the sorcerer's stone could be or as the britons say the philosopher's stone Oh. No, I, the only thing I thought was, uh, no, I don't know. I don't know. I, I have no idea. Do you think that there's, 
You can't even guess. Make an educated guess. No, How? I don't. But you're picking it up on all these small little things mentioned in this book. Because is there something? Yes, but I, that doesn't tell me what it is. I don't <laughs> know if it like if it holds power, or if it. I can't figure out what it is, and why they care about it. It looks like an actual stone, so I don't. Mm. I assume it holds some power. Mm. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. We'll we'll keep talking about the stone as we go on because that's a. Obviously, that's the whole title of this book. So we'll try to figure out right. what the heck the stone is all about. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll get there. Um, tell me, who is your favorite professor so far out of everyone that, that Harry has encountered? Who has he encountered? He's encountered Flitwick. Yeah, Flitwick, Snape. Snape. McGonagall. Sprout. Sprouts their which one is Sprout? I can't quite teacher. keep them all straight. They they like insulted okay. Sprout. He's like that. Every once in a while, they go outside and they get lessons from this like batty old woman who dresses in rough clothes or something like that. It was like a short oh. little description, of but she's the herbology teacher. Okay. Have they had any anybody else? Professor Bins is the most boring. Professor Bins is a is their history of magic teacher. Oh yes. Who's the best teacher that they have so far? Well, I like Flitwick just because he squealed and fell over. I thought that yeah. was funny. <laughs> He's cute. Flitwick's like and the I, cutest. Yeah, he was so cute. Um, and he seems good. He seems genuine. Snape is obviously the worst. Yeah. Only bad things will come from him. Interesting. Sure okay. Uh, can you typecast Snape for a quick second? Like, What is your initial impressions of him? Do you think that he's a bad guy? Oh, I think 100% he's a bad guy. Hmm. I think he's parading around like a good guy. I think he's either working for Voldemort or he wants to be on Voldemort's team. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like he's 100% bad, 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 bad. Um, and I have some suspicions of Quirrell with the man with the turban. Why Quirrell? Because of his turban. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, <laughs> all the phone. because of how they how yeah. they describe it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it this chapter or the? Well, first of all, in chapter either five or six or seven, in the last chunk we read, there's that great foreshadowing moment that we st I stuck a mental pin in where Snape and Quirrell are talking to each other, and one of them looks at Harry, and Harry's lightning bolt like hurts or activates or something. So I stick a huge pin in that. Every detail that's described in that little moment means something. I just don't know what it is yet. Mm -hmm. But one of the details described in that was the turban. And then in chapter eight or nine or 10, they describe the turban and how it smells. But he says it's garlic. So it to ward no, off evil spirits. No, the vampires. But he, but he never fully. But then he says, oh, he got gifted it warding off something in Africa, but he never explains the story when people ask. So he avoids questions surrounding his turban. So there's something about it. So my suspicion with the turban is that it is also somehow connected to Voldemort. And I can't help but wonder, I don't know how nonsensical this world gets, but I can't help but wonder if Voldemort like uses it as like a seeing eye. <laughs> Like Voldemort has infiltrated the school through Quirrell. Quirrell is on assignment and Voldemort is like watching through this turban. <laughs> so you think Voldemort is hanging out in the back of the turban right now? Just chilling there. No, I don't think he's in the turp. No, I think Voldemort is off somewhere, but he has like basically like a camera through the turban. <laughs> he's got a webcam in the turban. And yes, that's how he's spying exactly. on everyone. A wizardly webcam. Yeah. Voldemort is somehow connected to this turban. Well, the turban is dark sided. In this story, there's good and bad, light and dark. Harry is good and light and pure. Voldemort is bad, bad, bad. Snape is bad. Quirrell, I'm putting on the bad side. So I don't know exactly how they all fit together yet, but I can tell you who's good and who's bad. There's a few people that are in the middle that I'm undecided on. Like who? But they're... Um, well, I guess Quirrell is a little bit on the middle for me, but the turban for some reason to me is like bad, bad, bad. They, they do describe it as, as 
suspicious in this. But yeah, but if you're suspicious in my mind, you're on the bad side <laughs> because it's a kid's book and it's a young adult book. Like it's not, I don't know that she's that nuanced. No offense. You're I think there's good and bad. Uh, so <laughs> there is, I know I might be wrong. There is, there is one huge byline of this book that, um, the world isn't really split into good and bad people. There's more nuance than that, especially in these books. There's for sure more nuance. At the same point, uh, like a good author, like any good author, like if you're looking at any mystery author, they're putting these characters in who seem bad to try to misdirect you. And then later, mm. maybe they're revealed as good. Same thing. Some of the good characters, she may be, might be misdirecting you to see like... If Hagrid, like, it ends up being bad, I will be upset. Why isn't Flitwick bad for you? Why isn't Hagrid bad for you? Well, Hagrid is so warm. We've already discussed Hagrid. For Hagrid sure. is just so kind. Um, Enneagram two just can't be bad. <laughs> well, they can. They, anyone can be healthy yeah, yeah. or unhealthy. But um, I would just be very disappointed if Hagrid ended up being bad. It's not out of the question. It's not out of the question. Um, I think he's gullible. So I could see him being like targeted by the bad side. And could he fall prey to those targets? Possibly. I hope not. Hmm. Um, Ollivander, for example, he's undetermined to me. Yeah, you said like he's a mystery because Harry has a weird feeling about him. Yeah, only because Harry said when he bought his wand, he wasn't sure how he felt about him. So yeah. that just leaves a question mark in my mind. Yeah. But Draco Malfoy to me, bad. Interesting. Okay. Um, nothing good will come from Draco Malfoy I'm sure <laughs> so of it. nothing good is going to come from Draco from Snape from Quirrell are there any other characters that you've decided are bad well Quirrell's a little bit less clear to me I okay. think Quirrell is 75% bad <laughs> I'm 75% sure he's bad <laughs> um, I think that's all for now I don't get a bad sense of any of the other professors like Dumbledore, McGonagall, they all seem good to me. Yeah, they all seem like good professors. At least they seem like they're intrigued by Harry in like a good way. Snape is, seems to be intrigued by Harry in like weird ways. Um, Snape is targeting him and like Snape was targeting him in that first class. Yeah. Like, see, it's he was like making comments like, um, I can teach you potions, but fame can only get you so far. And then when Harry didn't know the answer to some questions, he was like, see, fame can only get you so far. Yeah. Well, it's like, idiot, he's not trying to be famous. He's a kid. Like, he doesn't yeah. know anything. He's here for the first time. Like, Snape is totally projecting onto him unfairly. Um, so yeah. Snape is evil. <laughs> which, uh, which professor would you want to take most? Mm, Flitwick. <laughs> you just are a Flitwick fan right now. He seems like a good time. McGonagall would actually scare me if I was a student because she seems kind of intense. But as an adult, I like her because I think she. I don't know. I think she. she I don't know why I like her more as like a peer. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't take any. I think the kids like don't mess with her because they are a little bit scared of her. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but I think she's got their backs. Yeah, for sure. I, you feel like she kind of has her back. She's a little stern. She's a little scary. But Snape is an interesting character. And Snape, like the whole the whole title of this chapter is called The Potions Master. And this is this is one of the lines that we get of Snape that seems really strange. Like this is how his, his opening speech is. He says, you are here to learn the subtle science and exact art of potion making, he began. He spoke in barely more than a whisper, but they caught every word. Like Professor McGonagall, Snape had caught uh, Snape had caught every word. Um, sorry, this is uh, wrong. <laughs> like Professor McGonagall, <laughs> Snape had the gift of keeping a class silent without effort. As there is little foolish wand waving here. Many of you will hardly believe that this is magic. I don't expect you will really understand the beauty and the softly simmering cauldron with its shimmering fumes, the delicate power of liquids that creep through human veins, bewitching the mind and snaring the senses. I can teach you how to bottle fame, brew glory, even put a stopper in death. 
if you aren't a big bunch of dunderheads, as I usually have to teach. More silence mm -hmm. followed this little speech. Harry and Ron exchanged looks with raised eyebrows. Hermione Granger was on the edge of her seat and looked desperate to start proving that she, was, she wasn't a dunderhead. Again, Hermione's a little much in this. And then he mm -hmm. starts grilling with questions. He goes, Potter, said Snape suddenly, what would I get if I added powdered root of asphodel to an infusion of wormwood? So what would you get if you mix powdered root of asphodel into an infusion of wormwood? <laughs> I don't I don't know. I'm like Potter. I don't know. <laughs> These are asphodels a flower though, right? Come on. You should know that. I don't know spells. <laughs> you tell me. I'm going to read spells This isn't a spell. This is a me. potion. Oh, a potion. They're kind of one and the same in my mind, but I, I don't know. <laughs> then he asked them like other stuff. Like what would you, where would you look if I told you to find you, if, if I told you to find me a, a bezoar? And Harry is at a loss. And he says, what's the difference, Potter, between monkshood and wolfsbane? Why is he trying to deliberately embarrass Harry here? Because Harry obviously doesn't yeah. know the answer to these questions. Yeah, I, he's he's got a grudge against Harry. He's oh. jealous of his fame. You think he's jealous of his fame? You think that's the only thing? Well, he well that's one of the things, because he picks on him for that. He's like, see, even fame got to your head. What a, he makes a comment yeah. about fame. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, because I think Snape is dark-sided, he's resentful and threatened by Harry because he knows his story, hmm. how he couldn't be defeated by Voldemort. So Snape hates him for do you, it. Do you think that Snape is working with Voldemort? He either is or he wants to be. Okay. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm curious. If he's not connected to Voldemort directly, he is trying to like do his bidding until he comes back. Do you have any ideas on what uh, Enneagram Snape is? Anything in instantly pop out to you? Mm, um, well, no offense, but I could see him being a very unhealthy Enneagram <laughs> 5. Only in the sense that he seems very, and again, that would be an unhealthy he seems kind of like, like <laughs> detached. He seems aloof. I'm I just looked it up and they said, five. yes, he's a five. Severus Snape is a type five. <laughs> really? Yeah. But people, Why? but they say he's one of the most difficult to place because he's, he, he's very quiet and kind of isolated, but yeah, yeah he's, he is very much like a inward processor He's very quiet. He wants to, he loves information. He loves like these facts. Like he's quizzing Harry on all these, these weird information and fact things. I would mm -hmm. love that. I'm like, give me those weird trivia questions. If Snape's asking me those in class, I'm like, I don't know what it, what it is, but I'm going to make up an answer and sound like I know what I'm talking about, you know? <laughs> so yeah, they most people think he's a five, but no one's. It's tough with, Enneagram is all about like your inner world so it's tough in some ways yeah. to guess for like a character that you don't know that well yeah yet. for sure yeah like what's he motivated by i don't really know yet because i don't know who this character is yeah for sure um this is a weird this might be a weird question but you what is what is fang what's what fang hagrid has an animal named fang hagrid oh I thought it was a dog, but I don't know okay, if they good. say. <laughs> good. I was just asking you that question because a lot of people read it because it says he's a boar hound and a lot of people think he's a boar rather than a dog. Oh, no. I thought it was a dog because it talks about how he rests his head on Harry's lap and yeah, he's yeah. like drooling or something. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, I assumed it was a dog. Good. <laughs> That's just a little side question I had to ask Pass you. Pass that. <laughs> Pass that question. Yeah, 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 there you go. Your Enneagram 5 is poking up perfectly Pass right now. Pass the test. <laughs> Um, so last one for this chapter, but do you, you, we, we talked about maybe why the reason why Snape hates him. Do you think it's just, it just has to do with, uh, jealousy. Do you think it's just maybe like he has a student he wants to pick on or he just like, doesn't like Harry for his fame or is there, uh, is there something else that's going on here? Is it maybe he just like, um, has like a student he picks every year and he just doesn't like that student and Harry is well, a random person. He no, I think it's more to it than that because we all know Harry's 
identity. Mm -hmm. He's the chosen one. But it also says in that chapter that something about Snake kind of took a liking to Malfoy. Mm. So I think Malfoy is his little pet. Mm. I think that he sees the the darkness in Malfoy and sees someone he could like, you know, groom, so to speak, to be on the dark side Yikes. with him. Um or who's on his way to the dark side already. Mm. Um so I think there's something more to it to why he hates Harry. It's not just like I don't think it's just a little bit of jealousy. Okay. I think it's part of this great battle. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Let's go on to chapter nine, the midnight duel. Can what do I get if I'm right? I, well, you're not going to know you're right until the end of the book. Well, yeah, I know. But then what happens? I'll give you, I'll what put do a, I win? What's my prize? I'll make a clapping track. And every time you say, oh, I got that no, right. I'll play that clapping track. <laughs> no, but what prize do I get? <laughs> oh my gosh. Let's go into chapter nine, the midnight duel. Give me a quick summary of the midnight duel. Um, so I forget where they are, but Draco, maybe they're in the dining hall. Draco comes in and challenges Harry to a duel in that night. Mm -hmm. Um, so Ron is his backup and I forget who Draco's backup is, mm -hmm. but Hermione overhears it. And says, no, don't go do that. So that night, they sneak out of their Gryffindor hall. And Hermione is waiting for them to try to tell them to not go. And she follows them. And they get locked out of, like, their hall, I guess. And then on their way to meet Draco... I forget some names here, but someone or something, some creature is like patrolling the halls looking for them. Mm -hmm. I forget the name, but if you said I'd recognize it. Uh, Mrs. Norris or Peeves. Yes. And then it's Pete. No, the other one. Filch. Flinch. Filch. Filch. Yeah. <laughs> Filch is looking for them and they don't want to get caught. <laughs> so. You said some creature. <laughs> Well, I don't know who's who or what's what. Some people are ghosts. Some people are cats. Some people are witches. Some people are children. <laughs> it's hard to keep up with all the creatures. It is for sure. Um, but Filch, Finch or Filch? Filch. Filch is patrolling. They don't want to get caught. So they start to run away. Oh, and then they end up in some hallway mm -hmm. to try to get away from him. They open some door and there's a three-headed dog guarding mm -hmm. a trap door. And they see it, run away. They get back into Gryffindor Hall. They don't get caught. They go to bed. Um, and then the it. next day. What? No, go ahead. And then the next day they go to, they have um, their, what are the broomsticks called? Yeah, yeah Quidditch lessons. What is, the, oh, it's a broom. His yeah, Nimbus they, 2000. No, not Quidditch lesson. They have flying lessons for the first time. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so they go outside and have the flying lesson. Yeah. You need to, um, I think you're flipping these. The flying lesson comes first in this chapter. And then he oh, has really? the midnight duel. Oh, my bad. Okay, okay. let me back up. <laughs> okay, just kidding. redo all of that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Okay, well, the order doesn't really matter, I don't think, but um, maybe it does. Um, they have the flying lesson with, uh, I forget her name, who teaches them how to fly. Madam Hooch. But then Neville go Hooch. Um, Neville goes up falls and gets hurt mm -hmm. so she has to take him to the hospital side note later on he talks about so i'm, I'm going to be very careful with my rhetorical question <laughs> it talks about later on when he they see neville again and they're like oh how's your arm and he says oh someone at the hospital like did a spell and fixed it right away my rhetorical question is why didn't Hooch just do that spell right there when he fell in the field? Could you want me to answer that really quickly? I'll, I'll give me a minute. Sure. 
Because some sure. wizards are just better at certain things. Like Snape is the okay. potions master. He's better at potions. McGonagall is a transfiguration teacher. She's better at transfiguration. <laughs> Hooch <laughs> might be able to heal his arm, but there's a designated wizard that is like trained as a healer. Like, gotcha. like I know some things about law, but I'm not going to go be a lawyer in a court case. It's like wrong. Mm. So it's the same thing in the okay. wizarding world. I can go on okay. about this question if you are not. <laughs> that's, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to learn okay, how to answer these questions real I'm quick. I'm satisfied. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make rhetorical questions and or questions that can be answered in under one minute. <laughs> Okay, gotcha. Okay. Well, so Neville falls and gets hurt. He's taken to the hospital wing. Mm -hmm. And while he's gone, Malfoy takes his forget-me-not ball, whatever it's called, (laughs) remember all. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) And steals it and is flying up with it. And Harry goes to try to rescue it. And he does this tricky little move where he's diving towards the ground and catches the ball Mm -hmm. at the split second right before he's about to hit the ground. And McGonagall comes out and catches them and yells at him and like takes him inside. He thinks he's going to get in trouble. But then she basically says he's the best. He's she's amazed by his skills. So he's uh, invited to join the Quidditch team. Mm -hmm. And he's the first first year to join in a century. A century. (laughs) Harry's the first. I know. And his dad was also a good Quidditch player. Yeah. 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 Good summary. That's perfect. Okay. Well, thank you. But here's another thought I have is for some reason, this felt a little far fetched to me. Like Harry being this genius Quidditch player when he's never played sports before, he's never gotten on a broom before. It felt a little far fetched to have this and to all of a sudden be this wonderkins and to be invited to yeah, be a first year student. For sure. It feels a little too good to be true. It might be too good to be true. It might be that Harry's terrible at this later and it was just beginner's luck. I don't think that's it. I think he's going to be an all star. But some all stars are just all stars. Like if you look at sports history, some kids like Lionel Messi is a prime example of this. He's the greatest soccer player to ever have existed. He's he is the best soccer player of all time. And when he was younger, he was playing kids. He was like half their size and he was playing kids two years up, two years older than he was, three years older than he was. He was playing like high schoolers when he was in elementary school and he would just destroy them. He was that good. It could be the same with Harry. Some people, they don't really need to touch it. They just have coordination. They have the ability to do like all this kind of stuff. Harry might just be that. It might be in his blood. His dad was a Quidditch sensation maybe. Um, and Harry could just be naturally gifted at that stuff it could also be magical it it could also be like a magical thing passed down coordination could be a magical thing like you know i bestow upon you coordination with your wand and he's just naturally Mm -hmm. able to do something it could also have implications maybe voldemort imparted some something into harry and that something was quidditch skills like accidentally you know why would voldemort do that i don't know (laughs) I'm <laughs> just throwing out random stuff. <laughs> it's just a possibility. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're not. We're exhausting okay. all possibilities. It's, it just felt a little. I don't know. Felt a little much. Yeah, I, I will give you that because there is a point to it where, um, this this is true of like I think of brilliance of child brilliance. Like kids can just be brilliant or not be brilliant. But I don't think sports is exactly the same thing. I don't think a kid can just automatically be good at sports. Mm-hmm. I think that's something a bit mm-hmm. more learned. And a lot of people have mm-hmm. an issue with J- uh, JK. Like someone is even saying this in chat right now. JK doesn't know sports really at all. She created yeah. she created Quidditch because she was mad at her ex-boyfriend or something like that for always watching <laughs> football really? games and soccer games. Um, so she was like, I'm just going to create this stupid sport that all wizards are infatuated by. And she doesn't exactly know like, the if, reality yeah, yeah the of, reality of yeah. things like if you're if yeah, you yeah. harry probably just by picking up a broom for the first time wouldn't that wouldn't do a thing that's like not how sports really work but at the same time there is such a thing as a prodigy so maybe this is just like a, a natural ability that he has you know yeah that's a that's a great great that. point though that's a great point hmm, <laughs> hmm. well 
What do you think Swam of uh, <laughs> <laughs> What do you think of the remember all in this chapter? Uh I it's, just, it's a gift from his mom or his grandma or something. Yeah, it's a gift Neville. from his grandmother. Mm-hmm. I don't think too much into it other than it just happens to be what he was holding and Malfoy got a hold of it to like okay. be a jerk basically. I wasn't really reading too much into it. <laughs> Why am I asking the question then? You should be reading that into it. could just be one of your tactics. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to throw you off so much of this podcast. <laughs> um, what do you think of Neville? What's your uh, first impression of Neville? Because like who are Harry's other roommates? He has Ron. Neville's one of them. Do you know his other two? Oh, I get a little, I have a hard time keeping some of them straight. There's someone named Seamus. Yeah, or something Seamus like is that. his other one. And then another guy, I don't know if we actually know him. Dean is his last one. All of them are early no, side characters. But Neville's one of the first ones that pops up here. What do you think of Neville? Uh, Neville's kind of undecided for me. I don't have anything negative to say about him. Mm. I haven't gotten any bad vibes from him. Um, to me, he's just like a neutral supporting character so far. Okay. Interesting. I don't, I don't, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I don't have anything. I don't have any, there's not been really anything negative lately or yet. What did you think was going to happen when Harry caught the remember all? Um, what did you think was going to happen to Harry that when McGonagall caught him? Do you think he was like going to well, get suspended? If it does seem, yeah, it seems like he's going to get in trouble. Yeah. You don't really think he's getting taken away because he's a whiz yeah. uh, on his broom and she wants to pull him for Quidditch. Yeah, it also... I thought he was going to get in trouble. I know. It, it also is crazy that after one catch of this Remember All, she's so sold on Harry being Seeker. She's like, okay, let's go make him Seeker after just one little catch. She doesn't see any other like game footage. That's a terrible scout yeah. right there. But yeah. I don't know. I guess she I guess she and knows she, Quidditch more than I do. She goes and well, she wants her house to win, I guess, that each of the profess like Snape is over the Slytherins. So she's yeah. a fanatic and she wants her house to win. There is so she marched him inside. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna mess up your mind here, but there is a a small little side theory that McGonagall has a crippling gambling addiction. <laughs> and gambles <laughs> on all of the uh the quidditch matches and gryffindor is her team so she's trying to bolster gryffindor's chances because she also gives harry the world's greatest broom at the time a nimbus 2000 yeah. which we're yeah. going to talk about in a second but that seems excessive <laughs> so we'll get into that theory maybe as we go on if you see anything yeah maybe she has ulterior motives i get a little yeah. lost in like theories though because yeah for sure or what's it called? Fan fiction. Is it fan fiction? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, fan theories. Like, um, yeah, some of it's fan fiction. Some of it's just like, yeah, little theories that people come up with. People write their master's thesis. Like someone is just talking on chat and they're saying, uh, this one person wrote this whole master's thesis on this outlandish idea. I'm not going to tell you what it is. but An, an actual master's thesis? Mm-hmm. Like a, or a dissertation or it might have been a PhD dissertation. I don't know what it was. <laughs> Wow. There's there's some out there. It's in, it's intense. Ooh. Um okay. there's a there's even this funny line like Harry really thinks what he's done is wrong. So when McGonagall brings him in, she goes, uh, she brings him into Quirrell's um class and she goes, Professor Quirrell, may I see wood, please? And Harry goes, Wood, Harry thought, bewildered. Yeah. A cane. Was wood a cane she was gonna use on him? Like yeah. that's so sad of Harry that that's his first initial reaction that he's so abused and neglected that he thinks like this is a punishment for him it even though everything in the text seems like it's going to be a punishment for him it's sad that this is harry's first reaction to that yeah and he's innocent he i mean this is like that's not a good thing but i think because he grew up the way he did and not in the wizarding world as like knowing he's the star of the show he has a very humble mindset like he has a humble view of himself yeah So he doesn't walk around like he's this little prince. Yeah, absolutely. He's, yeah, he does have a heck of a lot more humility than um, Mm -hmm. than anybody that you've kind of seen at this point, Uh, Mm -hmm. which is something really endearing about Harry. Harry. That's something I love about Harry. Which is not, not to, you know, divert back to Enneagram 9s, but Enneagram 9s 
are typically a humble people. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you're doing. You're patting yourself on the back and you're going, all the no, weird I'm characters are Enneagram fives. All the no, weird I ones. No, I can't be like, oh, all the good Enneagram ones. nines are the most humble. Enneagram <laughs> nines are the most humble you'll ever meet. <laughs> That's not it. <laughs> But it is a common trait. Yeah, for sure. To not think yeah. too too highly of yeah. oneself. You definitely do have a lot of humility to you. Harry has a lot of humility to him. <laughs> well done, nines. Yada, yada, yada. <laughs> uh, would you actually want to learn how to fly a broom? Is that something that would appeal to you? Um, If I knew, I wouldn't fall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was talking about this with some people. If there was like a five, five feet or lower, I would love to play Quidditch, like five feet or lower. But anything higher than that where you're like nervous about falling yeah. over, I don't know if I do I wouldn't well. play Quidditch, but I would just go for a little joyride. Sure. No, I yeah. see. You wouldn't play Quidditch though? Not interested in no. wizard Quidditch? Too much too much going on. Oh, I know what a quaffle is now. I know. <laughs> it's not wizard's breakfast. Real, it's a it's a real missed opportunity, though, for her to branch into wizard food. <laughs> I know. Now it's one of the balls in a Quidditch match. <laughs> well, most of the food that you get, you get some wizard food, some sweets that are wizard food. But then at the end of this chapter, I, I read something that I, I mean, like I had read this all the time, but steak and kidney pie. And it's not kidney beans. It's actual animal kidney. And I'm like, that's disgusting. Ew. He's eating steak and actual animal kidney pie. It's like an English Ew. thing. I'm like, Brits have the weirdest food. Their food <laughs> is so gross. Like, I am not into have that you stuff. Seen, there's videos on YouTube of British kids eating American food. And it's hilarious. Really? I'll find it. Yeah. I'll find it and, and show you. Like, one of the things they eat is a biscuit. Mm -hmm. Like an American biscuit with like, I think it's gravy on top <laughs> because they call biscuits cookies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what else? I think they, this video, all the kids in the video like all the Americans food, but <laughs> yeah. I forget what else is in there. I feel like most of the American yeah. food is a little sweeter than British food, but steak and kidney pie yeah. is not something that I want to eat. That sounds gross no. to me. Yeah, that sounds gross. Um. Your thoughts on Draco. You gave me a bit of your thoughts on Draco, but you don't like him at all? No, absolutely not. No, he's terrible. <laughs> okay. And even Harry doesn't like him. Harry, it says that he hates him more than he hated Dudley. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I I don't, at this point, see any redeeming qualities to Draco Malfoy. He's just bad and mean hmm. every time we see him. And he's always flanked by his two little ogres. Crab and Goyle, yeah. So, yeah. So who's more of a turd boy, you know. Draco or or uh Dudley? Uh I think Draco because Draco has like dark powers behind him. I think Dudley is a little bratty little turd, but Draco <laughs> is more dangerous because he is a wizard bad boy. Okay. Okay. So he could do more damage as yeah. a wizard. Yeah, hundred percent. He's a little bit more dangerous. I'm predicting. Because Draco Malfoy is Harry's age, and there's seven books in the series, I'm predicting that Draco will become a more of a protagonist later in a later book. I think he's a villain to come. I think we're just seeing how he's getting started right now. But I think later in the series, in some future book, he's going to be like the protagonist. In one of you the mean books. the antagonist? That's what I said. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> the antagonist. I yes, also, yes, yes. I also like how the the whole time you were saying that you were just kind of giving me the side eye, looking for my reaction. <laughs> <laughs> he will be the antagonist um, in one think, of the books. Do you think that? Yeah, that's actually an interesting question. Do you think that? Um, who do you think is the antagonist of all these books? Do you think Voldemort is? going to be just for this book and it's going to be different ones for every single book going forward hmm. um gosh i don't know i think that i think that voldemort will i kind of assume he'll be in all of the books <laughs> so voldemort's gonna come back seven times <laughs> no i don't think that it's no i think voldemort's going to be I don't think he's going to come back. I don't think he's gone. I think he's just hiding. Okay. okay. He's lying dormant somewhere. Okay. But his his spirit is still around. 
So I think he will be somewhat present in all of the books, but there might be like he's lesser. Like the dark, yeah, 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 for sure. He's like the dark, like Lord. He's like the ultimate over enemy all of the dark people. And then there's yeah. going to be like so he, side quests. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to have someone like acting on his behalf or okay. acting on behalf of the dark side in each, in each book. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I like your theories here. They're very, very, they're very far off, but they're really interesting. <laughs> <I'm just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> they're absolute nonsense, but they are interesting. <laughs> I feel like I have vague, I have some vague ideas. I just don't know any specifics yet. Yeah, yeah for sure. For sure. And we'll flesh out some off. of those specifics. Yeah. Yeah. They might be way far off. They might, you know, um, what do you think about them keeping a three headed dog in the school. This is the last question for this chapter before we go on to the last one. Well, it says um, that whatever he's hiding is very powerful or very scary. I forget the words they use. So I would guess that he's hiding something. I think he's definitely hiding whatever was in that top secret vault. Hmm. Okay. Um, and. <laughs> and <laughs> what? Um, hmm, never thought of that. Hmm. <laughs> Hmm, interesting. Um, Is that I, my tell? I just go, hmm. Every time you're right on something, I just go, No. Hmm. No, no, that's not your tell. I think <laughs> you're trying to switch it up, but that's not your tell. <laughs> okay. Um. So the dog, yeah, the dog is, I don't know, protecting something that is too powerful for the children to touch. Okay. But I can't help but wonder why they took it out of the vault and placed it in Hogwarts. Yeah, Hagrid does kind of say that Hogwarts is the safest place. But is the Hog- is Hogwarts really the safest place? Or is there another spot that's safer than Hogwarts? Well, I don't know if it's more or less safe than the vault. Because yeah. they were talking about how the vault, if anyone tried to rob the vault, they would have like, melted or yeah. not been able to get through the door so or they know. they would have been sucked through the door but they would have been stuck there for 10 years or they would have been stuck there for um, as long as they, until they check the vault which they check it once something every 10 like years that or something yeah yeah because you picked up on that line before. yeah yes i did but hogwarts doesn't seem like the safest place because there's a three-headed dog and then on top of that in the next chapter there's a troll that seems to wander in so if you're a parent I don't know if you'd send your kids to Hogwarts. It seems like a pretty dangerous place to be completely honest. Well, yeah, I agree with that. And I think that part of my issue with Snape is that he was like berating Harry. Someone does a spell and it go, or someone does a potion and it goes awry and it starts spilling. And Snape starts yelling at Harry, like, why didn't you yeah. stop him or tell him not to do this? Yeah. But my two cents is like, no, idiot. Why did you give these children... The opportunity to create such a like dangerous potion that's your fault as the teacher yeah. you're giving them too much like power responsibility and not guiding them enough too much too soon because they're kids do you not do you yeah. think he's a bad professor yes yeah he's berating the kids he's yeah. calling them dummies or thunderheads or yeah. whatever <laughs> thunderheads <laughs> something like that yeah yeah he's not good with kids okay yeah, he doesn't seem very good with kids at all, except for Draco. He has like one or two favorites that he likes. And then other than that, yeah. no one's good. Yeah. But even his intentions there, I don't think are good. I think he only likes Draco because he sees something dark in him. Interesting. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, let's go on to chapter 10, the final chapter for this little section. Halloween. Give me a quick summary of this chapter. Um. Oh, right. Okay. There... He learns how to play Quidditch with Wood. Mm-hmm. Um, they go out in the field. Wood explains how to play Quidditch, the positions, the balls, the what position Harry is and everything. So they practice a little bit. Um, <clears throat> and then I think some time passes, right? Like two months and they're in the dining hall. Yep. And um, they're in the dining hall and Quirrell comes in and tells Dumbledore that there's a troll. Isn't it Quirrell who comes in and tells Dumbledore there's a troll in the hallway? And so 
Dumbledore flicks his wand to get all the kids to listen. And Dumbledore tells all the prefects to take the students back to their halls. And Ron and Harry remember that Hermione is crying by herself in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And so they turn around to go try and tell her and save her. And they, and on the way there, they see Snape in the hallway. <laughs> Something of note. You're picking up everything, man. And then it's not that difficult. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, they see Snape in the hallway. They try and lock the troll back in some like wing, but then they hear Hermione screaming and they realize that she is locked back where the troll is. So they go in where the troll is and try and save Hermione and like distract the troll. And then some professor comes in at the end, I forget, but Hermione and then the two boys are about to get in trouble for being in there with the troll and Hermione stands up for them and mm -hmm. says whatever she says. And then they all become friends and they know that Hermione is on their side. Yeah, it was a cute ending to that chapter, right? They're like, yeah, they're, yeah, it solidifies their friendship with Hermione. Yeah, for sure. Even though Hermione still is a little much. She's a little like. A little intense still. It's cute that they're friends but they and they know all like that, each other. Yeah, they know they can trust her and she she has their backs. Yeah, for sure. Um, what do you think about, um, besides the gambling addiction, what do you think about McGonagall buying a Nimbus 2000, the current best broomstick in the world for Harry? <laughs> well, she's very committed to the Quidditch team. <laughs> yeah, she's very committed. Yeah. So is that because of her raging gambling addiction? I don't know. But she's very committed to wanting her team to win. Do you think that it should be, shouldn't it be like illegal for teachers to buy students brooms? I feel like there should be some kind of regulation behind that. Well, she's not just a neutral teacher, though. She's like the head of their team. So she's, she has different loyalties. She's not just like a <laughs> neutral teacher. Yeah, for sure. She's for very sure. vested in this team. Yeah. So is it illegal for a coach to get their, their player like the best soccer ball? No. <laughs> yeah you know i guess you're i guess it's kind of right yeah well well played touche <laughs> <laughs> uh what do you think about so could you understand quidditch do you understand the scoring do you understand how the game works generally yes i don't <laughs> I'm gonna know quiz if i can you. explain it to you <laughs> okay we could try who who are the three people that try to score um, I don't remember all the names, but I know that Harry, let me tell okay. you what I do know. Let's start there. <laughs> There's seven people on each team. Yeah. Um, three are like offensive. Yeah. Three are trying to score. Those three, are chasers. Th yes. Three are defensive. Nope. Only one is or defensive. Two. Well, actually you're kind of right. Um, three are a little bit defensive. One is keeper. One he watches over the hoops and the other two are beaters. They have a bat and they hit a the bludger. beaters. Yeah. Yeah. And the Weasley twins are those two things, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then there's like four different types of balls, but with Harry's position as a seeker, his role is to find the golden ball. Golden snitch. And get it in the one specific hoop. No, he just needs and to it, find it. He doesn't need to put it in a hoop. He just needs to catch it. Oh, and but the game does not end until that happens. And yeah. the longest game ever was upwards of three months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just had to keep getting subs because people had to sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love the little yeah, details so like seven... that. Yeah, that's a funny, it's a funny little game. It's creative that she made it up. Yeah. So it's weird because it's like a game within a game. There's like a game happening with essentially six players and then and then the seeker is playing its own game, just trying to find the snitch. And whoever catches the snitch get they get 150 points and then the game ends. And then every time So how do they find the snitch? Is it just flying back yeah. and forth and they need yeah. to catch it? It's um, just so quick that gonna, they need to find it. Yep, I'm gonna nerd, I'm gonna just bear with my nerd dumbs for a quick second. <laughs> okay. This snitch, this game used to be played with a bird. They would release this bird called a snidget. And when you say used to. When Quidditch was originally invented. In this world. In real life. <laughs> no, yeah, in this okay. world. It used to be, okay. they used to release a bird and it was a game that you just go catch the bird. 
but they would kill the bird so much when they would reach out and grab it that they like destroy the thing. So they just created this little ball called a snitch and the snitch is what they are trying to catch now. It like jo- like goes to and from everywhere in the, the uh, arena and the seeker who catches that first wins. Okay. As a funny side note, there is actually something in America, they don't call it Quidditch anymore, but it's an international sport. It is called quad ball. <laughs> and this July, there was just the quad ball world cup that took place in Virginia. No, and no there, was there wasn't. Representations from every different country. No. And this is what they do with the snitch. It's no. like a, it's like a bit of a ridiculous mm-hmm. game. <laughs> this is what they do. This You're going to get a much. kick out of this. You're going to, come no. on. <laughs> this is what they do with the seeker. Someone goes and they run around the stadium and the two seekers have to go. It's like tag. You have to go try to wrestle this thing to the ground and take something off of like, it's like flag football. Sometimes there's, there's snitches that people are, are dressed up as snitches and they are like short and quick guys and they're easy to get away. And then sometimes they're big guys and they just wrestle them to the ground. I can't. It's sometimes when you're describing these things, my brain just like, <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Goes Your brain just went dark. to sleep. I mode right cannot. There. It's like when I was in elementary school and like in science class, <laughs> I cannot pay attention for the life of this me. This is like Charlie Brown when all of a sudden the teacher's going, rah, 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 rah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would love to be able to understand what you're saying, but I cannot. <laughs> It um, bores me to tears. I'm bored to tears talking about this. Kind of stuff. You said that. I love this. Is you're like your your like villain arc right now coming out. You you kind of like Harry Potter, <laughs> but you're like I don't want to get into it that much. I want to stay surface level on this stuff. Yes. Can we please say surface level? All right. That's when I start to just die inside. When you start nerding <laughs> out into all these details, I just I just don't. It's just hard for me. It's emotionally very <laughs> difficult for me. Um, you said you wouldn't want to play Quidditch, right? Yeah, too much going on. Yeah, it's a little hectic. I was going to ask you what position you would want to play, but if you don't even want to play, I'm not even going to ask that Mm-mm. question. No, but I'd be a great... I'd be a fan. <laughs> I wouldn't even be a great fan. I'd be a... I thought you were about to say, no, but I'd be a great seeker. <laughs> like no, you are going to pat yourself on the back. I wouldn't be anything on the team. No. I would cheer for my house. I would be a great yeah. cheerleader for my house. Yeah. I would go support. Yeah. Good. Everyone, every team needs a good support system. <laughs> when I, I, when I was in kindergarten, I played soccer for one game and the coach put me as the goalie <laughs> and all I, I, I vaguely remember it too. There was, Everyone's just like yelling. Like there's mm-hmm. parents yelling on the side. The coach is yelling. Even you're five years old. I'm five years old. I'm standing in the goalie and I had never been the goalie during practice. I don't think. So I'm standing in the goal. There's all this pressure. I absolutely cannot take it. And I just <laughs> walked off the field, like walked over to my parents and I never played again. It was much too much for me. I can see that happening to a T. It you was just, too much. You just I like look over here at your yelling. parents. You're like, no. And then you just walk off. I just couldn't do it. No, but since then I've come to learn that that's part of just being a sensitive child. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember the feeling of just thinking like everyone's just yelling. Yeah. And like, it's a bit intense. Is, it was just, it was all too much. And so whether or not I had soccer skills, it was kind of beside the point i just couldn't take all the yelling so do you think i can handle quidditch with four balls flying through the air i know absolutely not. there's a lot to the sport it's it's like a complicated you probably sport. could you're an athletic there's, person you could do it yeah i would love playing I, i'd be so into this uh, what 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 would you be i would i would probably i would love to play keeper like scoring the goals but i'd probably mm-hmm. be uh keep or no i'd rather i'd love to play chaser which is scoring but i'd probably play keeper which is defending I played defense in soccer for the majority of my life Mm -hmm. until I played a little like high school. I played because we didn't have someone who could score. I played as the goal scorer. But in college, Mm -hmm. when they when like I came onto the campus, they were like, you're a defender immediately. And I played defense for all four years of college. 
And I could see that. Yeah. I think your your soccer skills would translate very well to Quidditch. <laughs> Thank even you. Though I appreciate Quidditch that. Quidditch isn't a real game, well, even though soccer is a real game and Quidditch is not. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. <laughs> You don't have to keep reminding I'll, me of that. I'll hammer you that much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. In this make-believe world, I think you'd be very good at this make-believe <laughs> game. <laughs> That's the nicest thing you've ever said about me. <laughs> yeah. Um, how do you, on a completely different note, how do you think someone could sneak a troll into the castle? Oh, let's talk about that for a second. Yeah. I don't think it was snuck in. I think that it was placed there. I think Quirrell and Snape are in cahoots with each other. Hmm. Snape, Quirrell and Snape, well, yeah, they're in cahoots with each other because Snape was the one in the hallway and they're wondering why wasn't he down where the other teachers were. I think this was all an elaborate ruse for Snape to be able to get up to whatever that three-headed dog is guarding. So I think Quirrell let the troll in placed it as a decoy to get everyone to be running amok to distract and allow Snape to get up to where that three headed dog is guarding what could potentially be the sorcerer's stone. Um, I'm going to poke a little bit of a hole in that. Um, That's fine. <laughs> the, they're in the third floor corridor. No students are technically allowed in the third floor corridor. Why wouldn't they just do it? any other time why would they have to bring a troll into school like to get when, everyone to leave the the that part of the building but no one really is in that part of the building ever well but they were near it maybe <laughs> i don't know the layout of hogwarts i don't have a blueprint in front of me <laughs> that's an they were trying to get everyone far far away okay so the troll is just a diversion. So you think Quirrell set the troll in. So you think Quirrell and Snape are working in cahoots with one another? Yes, I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. You don't think anybody else is involved? You think it's Quirrell and Snape and they're the only two? Um, now that I asked that question, you're trying to rack your brain, trying to look for other clues, thinking if um, anybody else is in the plot. Hmm. Not right. Not at this time. No. <laughs> mm -mm. All right. Interesting that you would be so short sighted that you wouldn't even catch some of these other clues that are in the text. <laughs> <laughs> A podcast where you invite your friends on to gaslight them and burn them as they read your favorite book. Interesting. <laughs> That's my dream. This is my dream come true. <laughs> I know. No, I don't. No one else is on my radar. Okay, so even though all the troll stuff happened, that's an interesting theory. We'll probably touch on that sometime in the next podcast. Because um, <laughs> uh, I want to talk about this one. Why Hermione was like left alone. She was crying in the bathroom. They came, they like rescued her. All that kind of stuff happened. But when the teachers came, why didn't Hermione just flat out tell the truth? Because she ends up telling Professor McGonagall, I thought, I thought I could take on the mountain troll by myself, so I went down there. Why doesn't she say, I was just in the bathroom, and Harry and mm. Ron just came after me? Interesting. Um, I don't know other than she just wanted to solidify her friendship, her alliance <laughs> with Harry and Ron. <laughs> They're such good friends, actually, and like, one of the scenes prior to that, she's crying because she heard one of them make fun of her. Yeah. Um, I forget which one. I forget what they said. But she left the room crying because they made fun of her. And she has no friends, I think. So yeah. this is her first bid towards friendship. Yeah. This is the last line in the chapter. But from that moment on, Hermione Granger became their friend. There are some things you can't share without ending up like each other, ending up liking each other and knocking out a 12 foot mountain troll is one of them. It's just like mm -hmm. a cute, cute little ending that like this is for sure where mm -hmm. she solidifies her friendship with them. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that it's a little weird that they only got awarded five points for taking down a fully grown mountain troll? I kind of didn't really understand the end of that. Okay. The points. Yeah. I don't get what I thought Quidditch was the only time they get points or I don't really get the points thing. 
Okay, short explanation, as quick as I can. There's that there's the Quidditch <laughs> Cup, which is whoever wins Quidditch. And then there's something okay. greater called the House Cup. And teachers award points. So like Hermione got an answer right in one of the classes. And they the, the teacher was like, or she was the only one to transfigure something, I think. And she got like five mm. points for that or something like that. So teachers give out points. So if you're if you're like obeying the teacher, if you're doing your assignments, if you're doing all this kind of stuff, you get points for your house. And at the end of the school year, the house with the most points wins the house cup. The Quidditch Cup is is separate from mm. that, but it still contributes oh. to the House Cup. So, like, if you win the Quidditch Cup, you get a certain amount of points that add on. It's like, for us Americans, it's like, you know, summer camp. It's like, which cabin wins or something like that. For okay. Britons, apparently, this is what all boarding school looks like, which is wild. Hmm. Well, I can't help but wonder if maybe the troll is just a decoy and the plan all along was for someone to defeat it and get points for their house. I don't know why they only got five points for defeating it. <laughs> they thought they were going to get in trouble for being in the building when they should have been out of the building. But then they get points because they defeat. Yeah, I didn't really know what was happening there. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that was sure. confusing to me. Yeah. Her uh, McGonagall essentially just gave them points because they did something cool. They did something like admirable. Um, and that's all it was like they, so points are just awarded based on how, whatever the teacher kind of thinks and feels. So like you, if you answer a question right in class, that like sometimes gives you five points, but like McGonagall saw they took on a fully grown mountain troll and like saved someone. So she's like, okay, now you get five points too. But isn't that interesting? She's giving points for her own house yeah. at her own discretion. Yeah. And you're going to see this. The teachers abuse this all over the place in these books. Yeah. Why? Well, why wasn't she like 100 points for killing the troll? It's because her house. they try why to be fair, but they're not fair. Hmm. Like you're okay. you're going to see. Do you know the heads of the houses yet? They need to have a rule book. So um, McGonagall. Snape is head of Slytherin. Yeah. Snape right? is head of Slytherin and McGonagall is head of Gryffindor. So Snape abuses this all the time in these books. He like takes away points of Gryffindor surprising. and gives points to Slytherin all the time. McGonagall sometimes sees him, it seems a bit more fair in this. So like everyone is like up against the Slytherins because they keep getting points for them. It's why don't they have policies and procedures on this then? We need to have one. You're place talking. They all you're come talking to, to the guy who says this all the time. <laughs> this is so flawed in the books. This is one of my least favorite points in all the books. That there's no official rule book for points. Yeah. There's no guidelines for That's that. That's a huge oversight. That's so a huge oversight. I think it's ridiculous that you answer. A que Hermione answered a question right in class, and she got five points for answering a question right. And then Harry and Ron took on a fully grown mountain troll and they buy, they got five right. points each. I'm like taking on a fully right. grown mountain troll should get you 50 points, not five. 50. Points. I was going to I was going to say 20. Yeah, it, it could be 20. Maybe it's 20. 50 points. Might but be it a little should steep. get you more. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. OK, good. We're on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> any last points, any last discussion points, any Enneagram stuff, any last personality theory, any last little tidbits before we hit our final questions? Mm. No, but I do like the friendship that Ron and Harry have. Do you like that Hermione's added to that? Or do you think that's going to be annoying? Well, no, I'm glad that she's a part of it now. But Ron is just a good. Ron could be an Enneagram six because I see him being a very steady, faithful friend. And Enneagram sixes are one of their attributes is loyalty. Okay. And I think that Ron is just like a very steady, the way their friendships is described so far is just like steady. Yeah. <laughs> you are nailing the Enneagrams right now. <laughs> Did you Google it? Yeah, I just Googled it. And he's a, um, some people think he might be a seven because of his enthusiasm, but they, huh. most people would say he's a six with a seven wing. Like he's got the enthusiasm wing, but oh, he really is more of like a loyal kind of person, like the six kind of. What Good else friend. does it say? What are you reading? Um, I'm looking up. Oh, I got to find something better. This is like talking about his Zodiac sign. I don't believe in space racism. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if you believe in Enneagram stuff <laughs> or uh, Zodiac stuff. Yeah. 
If you don't understand Enneagram, it probably sounds just like people talking about Zodiac stuff. Yeah, for sure. It definitely does. Because when I hear people discussing Zodiac stuff, I'm like, I don't yeah. I don't understand what you're saying, but I'm assuming I could sound just the same talking about Enneagram stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, it says, Ron, typically type sixes are usually anxious people who value their responsibility and security. They have a basic desire to feel supported and secure within their group or their career. Um, mm-hmm. And... They're kind of saying that. Oh, I could that. see that. Remember that there's another scene where we just read where I think it's when Snape is like picking on Harry and Ron kicks him under the table and he's like, yeah. don't let it go. Like, yeah. don't. So Ron is like looking out for Harry's back. That would feed into this Enneagram six. Yeah, absolutely. Theory. He really is a good friend. He's probably like, obviously, he's the best friend that Harry's had. But I love how good mm-hmm. of a friend he is. Um, yeah. He's he's a fantastic person in this book. I love. Yeah, him. it's a beautiful little friendship. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's go over the final three questions. Who's the okay. House Cup winner? Who's the best character in these? What's your favorite moment in these chapters? And then who's the hottest character? <laughs> the hot tamale. What was your first question? Who's uh, so we call it the House Cup Award? So who's your favorite character in these chapters? Oh, uh, uh. The one who squeals. What's his name? Flitwick. No, 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 no. Yeah, Flitwick. Flitwick. Yeah. He's cute. That yeah. was that. I did look that up because I didn't remember that. So you're remembering more than I am, which is impressive. But that's a cute little moment. He's so excited to see. Are Harry you reading this squeals. when I'm reading it each week? So yeah, I am. I'm actually listening to it. I'm listening to the Stephen Fry I should version. Hope <laughs> that you are. I'm listening to the Stephen Fry version, and I listen to it on Discord. And anybody else. Um, who's like part of our community who wants to listen, they can just like jump into the discord and listen with me and like help me come up with questions or help like fun discussion. And there was like 10 people listening with me this afternoon because I was listening to it and we were having a really fun discussion <laughs> and we were having so much fun that I was like, I I still have like a half hour. Do you guys want to like listen to chapter 11? And everyone's like, yeah, <laughs> let's do it. So we all listened to chapter 11 together and we were still just hanging out and talking. It was it's so hilarious. much fun. I loved it so much. <laughs> Yeah, Flitwick is great. I'm going to probably say... Uh, um, Hagrid is my House Cup winner for these. Mm-hmm. Uh, because of the friendship and the father and the motherly figure that he is to Harry. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. this is like the first moment I think Harry is really realizing that. And Hagrid just fills a really, really uh, big void in Harry's life that I, yeah. um, I really love. Definitely. What was your favorite moment in this chapter or in these chapters? Was it when Flitwick was excited and squealed and fell off? Yeah, it really was. I yeah. thought it was funny and like silly and cute. Yeah, it kind of was. I think, yeah. I think. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, go on. Well, just it wasn't my favorite moment, but a line I thought was clever was when um, Hermione is waiting for them to, to catch them on their way to the midnight duel. And the line is that she was wearing a pink robe and a frown. <laughs> yeah. I like that line. That there, are, there are really great descriptions of this. Yeah, this that was a good line. Um, I really love like the Quidditch stuff in these. I know because I'm like, I, that was my prior life was an athlete. I'm not mm-hmm. an athlete anymore, mm-hmm. but I really love the idea of like reliving that experience. And there's just a lot of excitement about, around learning a new sport and being involved mm-hmm. in like a team. And I really team. love that part. Yeah. Yeah. The team aspect is cool. Yeah. Yeah. Who wins the hot tamale? We don't have to award it, but. Yeah, I don't. No one. <laughs> Snape doesn't win it for you. Come on. The greasy teacher. No. Yeah. It's a little gross. No. I just like, no, I'm just, I just, I'm focused on um, Flitwick squealing and falling over. <laughs> yeah. We could just say Flitwick is the hot tamale. <laughs> But it's not hot. It's just my favorite moment. Nobody's <laughs> hot. No, well, nobody's hot, but I like Hagrid's love and care for Harry. Yeah, that's hot. It's the closest I'll get to hot. It's not hot, but it's yeah, just yeah. like, it's lovely. It's cute. It's good. It's good. Yeah, yeah. He's a good, he's it's a good endearing. man. Yeah. He's a good man. I love him so much. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you for joining us on our journey of Harry Potter and the Re First Time Readers. As Wes comes Who's up and stretches. Who's your hot um, I don't know if I'm going to award one either. There's some chapters that we just aren't going to award one because there's just no one. It's not always applicable. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely not always applicable. 
The only moment it was applicable thus far was when someone brought up hot Harrison Ford. Yeah, a hundred percent. He was. The There's clear. no one in this yeah. book I've found to be hot. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we actually implemented that award in the fourth book when, like, romantic feelings started to increase a little bit more. There was actually an interesting. <laughs> so the, there's a you. We were talking about um, like plans for the podcast for future, and my niece wants to read these books, but she's gonna. I'm gonna have her wait till she's 11, and I want to do these books with her. But I want her mm-hmm. to read a book a year until like so she ages with Harry because there's all these theories and like one of my biggest theories for these books is that these books age with you that when you're like the book one was written for an 11 year old book two was written for a 12 year old book three Mm -hmm. is when kids hit puberty and book three gets a little bit more intense books four five six and seven are like high school level and they're like a lot more involved a lot more dark stuff happening a lot more mature of like a read interesting i think um when we started doing the hot tamale award, it was when like the more mature themes were happening and we're like, Oh, there's definitely, there's clearly a hot character here right now. They're <laughs> just like, you know, we probably shouldn't be awarding a lot of hot tamale awards. So no, we can bypass a just, lot. We'll yeah, just, we'll just keep going hot, one. hot Harrison Ford. He's our hot tamale for every episode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> anyway, him. thanks That's for him. joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, what we should have done for a vote is a petition to allow me to watch movie one after I read book one. I really want to watch the movie because really? the world is so vivid. Yeah. So you can allow me to do it or I'm just going to do it. It's up to you. <laughs> <laughs>